Muy bien. Ahí la ven. Sí. So can you see my screen? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Janina Pensky. The idea of this space is to tell you about the transfers in the LACNIC region. How to obtain IPv4 addresses. Alfredo was telling us just now that we are in phase three of the IPv4 exhaustion process. So it is very difficult to obtain IPv4 addresses. So therefore, in order to achieve the deployment in your networks, the first option, and ideally what we recommend, is to opt for deploying IPv6. You can also ask for IP addresses to LACNIC and go into the waiting list. And the third option is to do what we call transfers. What are transfers? Transfers is when an organization that is no longer using an IPv4 address block assigned to it by LACNIC and then transfers these to another block that organization that does need these IPv4 addresses. This transfer is done through LACNIC. It is important to do this through LACNIC because as you are aware, LACNIC is the regional registry that has the database of the internet number resources. So it is therefore important to do transfers through LACNIC in order to have an updated database of these resources. Now, what are the types of transfers there are? Some are mergers, acquisitions, reorganizations, or relocations. If we don't have, otherwise we have resource transfer, uh, transfer resources, IPv4 resources, intra-IRR. These have been implemented since March, since March 2016. And also we have IPv4 inter-regional uh, transfers, inter-RIR transfers outside the region. This has been enforced since July 2020. So the two organizations continue to exist and one transfers the resources to the other one. A couple of considerations to take into account. These are contained in LACNIC's policy manual. As I mentioned earlier, these can take place within or outside the region. These have been implemented in LACNIC. The receiving organization of a IPv4 block can transfer this, whether partially or completely, after three years have elapsed following the, the receiving this block. Also, a block that was transferred previously, whether completely or partially, can no longer be transferred after one year. We must also take into account that a legacy resource that is transferred with no longer considers as such. All this information is available in the policy manual. This is the link. Let us look at some of the results of intra-IIR transfers. Until now, 135 blocks were transferred within the Latin American and Caribbean region. This is a space of 276,736 IPv4 addresses. If we look at the number of blocks transferred within the region, we see that this has increased, namely the number of blocks transferred from one year to the next. The highest amount was in 2019. In 2020, for 2020, we still don't have the final number. It might seem to be lower. Now, the important thing is that there are still many transfers that are in the process of being analyzed. It is therefore interesting to see the trend 
namely the number of requests for intra-RIR transfers. This shows clearly the annual increase, and it is likely that for 2020, this will continue growing, as we can see in this bar chart. Another interesting fact is the number of IPs that were transferred by of country offering these. These are the organizations that belong to the country that is going to transfer the addresses, and then the receiving I, a country that receives these. So if we look at the distribution by offering country, Brazil, Argentina, and Panama are the countries that to date have transferred the largest amount of IP addresses. And in terms of the receiving countries, these are the following. Brazil is at the top of the list, followed by Mexico and Argentina. And then you have all the other countries that have received transfers. Another interesting fact is comparing transfers that take place in other RIRs. For example, in RIPE, NCC, with ARIN, with APNIC, and AFRINIC, we note that there is a growing trend of intra regional transfers in each of the different RIRs. And we clearly see that RIPE and ARIN are the RIRs that have the largest number of transfers compared to the other regional registries. Regarding the inter-RIR transfers, out, the transfers outside the region, this was discussed at length, and many proposals were made in this regard, whether we should implement inter-RIR transfers. Nine different versions of four proposals were made in order to implement these types of transfers. In July 2020, this policy was implemented. Now, those of you who have this in presentation of this topic know that this involved a lot of work. More than 25 people participated. We had to adjust things with other RIRs in terms of the systems and processes with RIPE, AP NIC, and with NIC Brazil and NIC Mexico, and several other areas. And people from LACNIC staff had to participate in order to achieve the implementation of this policy. Some results so far about the implementation of these transfers outside the region. To date, one transfer has been done of a slash 18 block from Brazil to RIPE, specifically to France but we have eight transfers that are being an analyzed. Another interesting thing to observe is to see the movement of the IP, uh, the, the IP movement between the different IRRs. We can see that uh, the greatest uh, bulk is from ARIN to other regions, especially you see are into APNIC. This is the greatest flow of addresses that we have. And here, um, LACNIC appears with this first transfer. Here, I'm going to leave the link that where you can find more information on the three types of transfers, how you can request uh, if you want to um, request a transfer and a contact uh, mail 
if you want uh, to uh, um, ask for it, you can do it at hostmaster at laknik.net. And the idea here was uh, to give you an idea uh, for those of you who don't know what a transfer is, what types of transfers there are that could be done in our regions. That is, these are things that you can consider that when LACNIC um, allocates an IPv4 block, you have to wait three years before you can transfer it. And the rest of uh, the considerations are in the policy manual, and you can see it there too. So I wanted to share the statistics that are interesting to see up to, to date. So thank you. And I'm ready to ask uh, to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Janina. I have no questions, but just a comment. Ricardo says it was a slash 19 that was uh, uh, transferred inter RIR from Brazil to France. Thank you, Ricardo. We'll have to update that in our system. We thought that it was a slash 19 because it was Brazil, indeed. No sé si hay alguna otra pregunta o comentario. No sé si hay alguna otra pregunta o comentario. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Muy bien, thank you. Bueno, entonces, este, eh, ahora. Un segundo. Ah, perdón. Un segundo. Sorry. Ah, pero no me dice. Uh, just a second. Fernando Frediani me comenta, yo tengo. Fernando Frediani says, pero no me I have, I, I assume it's a comment, but he doesn't say what. Darwin Santana pregunta en español. Darwin Santana asks, uh, the, he says, uh, what is the process of analysis? Uh, have? Thank you, Darwin, for your question. Well, actually, it's a relative time. It's, there's no specific time. It depends a lot on the answers. If we are to analyze, you have to justify the need. And it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the case. But it also depends on the length of uh, response of the people who requested. So we have the analysis from in our RIR and in the other RIR. So it depends on how long it takes them to answer both the um, uh, region that's offering and the one that's uh, requesting. That's that's why it varies and it depends on uh, how long it takes for them to uh, respond. Thank you, Janina. We have another question in Spanish by Fernando Frediani that says, how does the LACNIC staff see the request for transfers that cannot be justified by the uh, um, uh, beneficiary? Once uh, the organization of origin declares that it's not used by the block, would they recover this block? Let me check that question in Spanish again. Hola, eh, Janina, si, sí. si Janina. querés, eh, yo le, yo le puedo wish, responder a Fernando. I can answer, Fernando. Yes, no, sure. Eh, en realidad, eh, well, nosotros actually, cuando hacemos el análisis de transferencia, eh, no analizamos, transfers, eh, no consultamos, eh, Fernando, consult. la, eh, Fernando, el uso que le están dando al bloque. O sea, lo, lo que nosotros they, consultamos, validamos al lado del oferente, so oferente lo que se valida from, uh, es the, uh, que tenga uh, un derecho uh, sobre esa CPF, que, que sea la, the, la organización uh, que puede, que puede to, to transferirla, they, they, uh, y revisamos la necesidad sobre quién va a ser right el receptor. Eh, entendemos que hay diversas razones por las que una organización puede querer transferir un bloque, como que va a ser más eficiente el uso de las IPs que tiene y cree que le pueden quedar podría, podría ser un ejemplo. Pero no, no les consultamos. No es parte del proceso ni, ni de la política.
José Morales pregunta en José español. Morales is asking in Spanish, to what extent are the transfers reliable and secure? Bien, este, well, este, ¿me escuchan ahí? Can you hear me? Ah, está. Este, en verdad, desde, well, desde la... actually, from LACNIC, what we do is to ensure that the uh, uh, organization that requests is indeed uh, is who he claims to be, and if it's the receiver, the side of the receiver, that it should really justify the need. Then, part of the arrangement of the organizations that is outside LACNIC. LACNIC does not get involved in that. But we can validate the previous, the previous part is that those who request the IPs need to be those that, uh, the ones that are going to transfer the IPs need to be the ones that have a right to those IPs. And on the other hand, those are, that are going to receive them need to justify that they need them. I, I hope I responded to the question. I have one more by Jose Morales in Spanish too. Jose is asking, can you have a request of IPv4 in LACNIC and transfers of IPv4 simultaneously? Well, actually, there are no policies banning it, uh, prohibiting it. I'm thinking of a real case. I understand that it hasn't happened to us. Please correct me, Alfredo, if I'm wrong. But um, somebody that requests uh, IP4 would enter the waiting line, and if at the same time they request a transfer, Janina, let me see. There's an issue. This is a timing issue. When you receive an IPv4, you can't have the space received for the transfer. That is, if you have all the two requests open and the transfer is solved and you receive the space of the transfer, you won't be able to receive the IPv4. The ideal thing is first to request the IPv4 with LACNIC and then to do the transfer. En el que la Because as soon as you receive the transfer, que, que por, por then LACNIC. you have no the space that o sea, was se, se uh, assigned, uh, located by LACNIC. No sé si, si estoy I la, don't la know whether cosa. I'm clear with the answer. Gracias, Alfredo. Thank you, Alfredo. El punto, comenta Edmundo, Casares en este. uh, Edmundo Casares says, in, the issue is that the waiting list is for an initial allocation. Ah, perdón. El mundo eh, se le fraccionó el mundo, la... Ah, uh, I'm going to... Uh, is completing it. His uh, comment. He says, if you obtain a transfer before, then this uh, allocation would no longer be initial. José dice que sí respondieron su pregunta. José dice que yeah. eh, Carlos, they perdón, déjame volver. No, quiero, eh, si puedo, puedo volver un paso atrás a la pregunta de José. Can I go a step Pero, back lo que le pido es que, que nos deje investigar question. un poco más, porque deberíamos leer. José, por favor, no tenemos un caso así. Give us some time y, y to investigate, because we haven't seen any cases like that, so I have the doubt. Prefiero leer que leamos tranquilo con el equipo la política. I'd rather read it. Y le damos una respuesta. Si quiere que nos escriba, después escribirme a mí directamente. More leisurely with the team. Maybe you can ask me or Janina, and we can reach you back, because sometimes in your cases, it's good to analyze them well. I don't know whether you want to make comments about what Edmundo said. I, I missed uh, his question. Edmundo had said that it would no longer be an initial allocation. As Alfredo says, these are cases that appear. Well, you implement new things new things that appear, there are exceptional cases all the time. As this case did not happen, I think that in addition to the answer of Alfredo, I think that it is important to coordinate all of this 
criterio because we always have to work in common creo que es mejor that is why I think it is better para poder to work with this together so that we can give a, a, a response all together thank you Janina let's see if we have any others Jordi Palet yes. Is it better to ask the question in the list and then to have it for all the community? Yes, of course. Dice, de todos modos, también Jordi, anyway, la política, Jordi, from my point of view, the policy allows it. Caer la otra. Creo que, creo que... One would make the other one fall. I think that that is what Jordi wanted to say. 